there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Dog in the Midlands area, you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. He's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friend a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are. The dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. On today's show, we meet some wonderful dogs, like Cassie here, whose owners are struggling to give them the care they need. And more often than not, when that happens, a dog's welfare can suffer. But thanks to our devoted dog rescuers, Cassie and countless others are able to bounce back with their tails wagging. This is the wagging bit. Do the wagging. She only wags off camera, as do I. Coming up. Gussie. They're just going a bit stir crazy, aren't they, Anita? Two border collies need rescuing from an owner whose life has spiralled out of control. I don't think it's very fair on them, is it, really? Living like that. It's a shaggy dog story. He's a strange-looking dog, isn't he? In, in a nice way. When Inspector Anthony Joins meets elderly Alfie. He looks like a cartoon character, doesn't he? And I'm with Kevin, a very special rescue dog who's helping his owner lead a fulfilling life. Thank you. Good. In Staffordshire, Inspector Charlotte Melvin is on her way to check on two border collies called Cassie and Jess. Their owner is struggling to cope, and they're all living in unsuitable conditions. Charlotte has already issued him with a warning notice to get the house cleaned up. Just heading to see how they're both doing, um, and also to see um, the property, to see if he's made any improvements with the tidiness and things like that. If the conditions are the same as last time, the only next step is going to be taking the dogs. It is hard when you go into a house like that because you do feel sorry for the animals, but at the same time, there's a person that's living there. But it's something that if you're going to do this job, you've got to accept that you can't save everyone from every situation. See how you're getting on. Come in. Oh. Oi! Come here, you. Straight away, Charlotte can see the situation hasn't improved. There's rubbish and flies everywhere and mouldy dog poo in the kitchen. It's even worse in here than last time, isn't it? It's a mess in here, I know that. I don't think it's very fair on them, is it, really? Living like that. You shouldn't be living in this either, should you? It's disgusting. It's disgusting. The state of the dogs, lively longer-haired Cassie and older shorter-haired Jess, is also a concern. These have both lost weight, haven't they? Compared to last time I was here. What food is going to eat? Have they though? There's food in there, aren't there? Yeah. No, there's none in here, and there's no water anywhere for them either. The owner and his dogs used to live on a farm, and former working dogs like Cassie and Jess can find it hard to adapt to a home environment. Cassie. But they're just going a bit stir crazy, aren't they, Anita? How old's she? She is getting. She must be in her teens, well in her teens. In her teens? Yeah, well I think. in her teens. She's one of the best sheep dogs. Well, she was the best sheep dog I've ever had. That's what I mean. She's gone from a life of that, hasn't she? Being outside and doing mm. all that work and everything. Mm. 
And now they're just cooped up in here all day, aren't they? <laughs> they're quite happy here. I don't think they are, though, are they? I don't think they're happy with each other, to be honest. Charlotte spotted that younger Cassie keeps bothering older Jess. She's constantly all the time on at her. And that could be another reason why she's lost weight, if she's getting a bit stressed with that. To be honest as well, I'd like to get a vet to look at her, because of how, how much weight she's lost. If you're telling me she's been eating... Yeah, she's eating. She's ..and eating, she's lost she's all that weight, months. then there's something not right with her, is there? She's getting old, isn't she? I love my dogs. I love my dogs to death. Well, that's the thing, though, but they can't live like this, can they? The owner doesn't want to give up his dogs, and Charlotte has no legal power to remove them on her own. The dogs can't live there. I mean, don't get me wrong, he does love them, but you can't sacrifice the dog's welfare for his happiness. You've got the younger one who's obviously full of energy, winding the bigger one up all the time, the older one. Um, she just looks fed up with it, to be honest. Charlotte has no option but to call the police. See if we can get somebody here to seize them. Yeah, what's the reason that you need police assistance? To get the dog seized. What's the reason for the seizure? Conditions mainly, and then one of them's quite thin as well. Back inside the house, Charlotte delivers the news. I don't like losing my dogs. You need to sort this out then, don't you? The owner's case will be considered, but for now, the police will be seizing the dogs. Oh. There's obviously some bigger issues here, isn't there? You probably need to get you some help with. There's obviously quite a bit of mess throughout the house. Downstairs is bad enough, but policeman Rob Peacock makes an alarming discovery upstairs. There's no furniture, just wall-to-wall -wall dog feces. It's clear the dogs haven't been going out and the owner is in desperate need of help. We've made some referrals to get some support for you from social services, but due to the smell, I've asked for environmental health to come and have a look to see what we can do, because it's quite bad. I would say that the majority of people that we work with are people that you do feel sorry for. A lot of the time, we might be the person that does actually flag up issues to the relevant support services that might have never been found if it wasn't for us going to see the animal that's living there. With the police agreeing to seize both dogs, Collie Jess and lively young Cassie can be removed from the property. Come on. Come on. She's here. You're not going to get in there, are you? Come on. Come on. Good girl, in you go. Good girl. Good girl, come on. Come on, in you go. What she doesn't. They don't feel very nice taking the dogs, to be honest. It's not like you've gone in and it's somebody who's been beating a dog or something like that. It's his lifestyle that's got out of hand. Uh, it's gone on a downward spiral, and then now that's impacting on the dogs. Cassie and Jess both look underweight and need to see a vet. Hopefully it's just lack of food causing their poor condition. Inspector Charlotte Melvin has just rescued Border Collies Cassie and Jess. Hello. They've been cooped up in hazardous conditions. Come on in. Good girls. Come on in. Both dogs also seem on the thin side, so Charlotte has brought them to see vet Deborah Rag. Five-year-old Cassie is first up. Should we give it a go see if we can put you on the table? Cassie is very nervous and stressed, which could make her behaviour unpredictable, so Deborah pops a muzzle on her. It's OK, you. It's all right. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. It's OK. It's OK. Do you want to come this side and take over where I am so I can let go? Lending a hand is vet nurse Jane James. Young Cassie and older Jess have been cooped up indoors, and it seems Jess has been responding to Cassie's boisterous nature with a few nips. Got some little grazes and things. Probably where the other one's had a bit of a go if she's just not left her alone. It looks like a fresh bite wound. We, we will do antibiotics as a precaution because bite wounds inevitably do get infected. 
Yeah, that's not fresh today. That's a few days old, at least, by the looks of it. And it's not just bite wounds Cassie has to contend with. She's also very thin. So she's definitely got muscle wastage on her head. You can feel right down to that skull straight away. You can feel her pelvic bones a bit more prominently than would be comfortable. If she were a working dog chasing around the fields and being fed well, I wouldn't be overly surprised at this, but bear in mind this is a dog that's not chasing around the fields anymore. She could do with a bit more food, definitely. Cassie's wounds need cleaning, something Jane can get started on, whilst Deborah gives older girl Jess the once-over. Thank you. And now you look very worried. Under all that fur, she has got some muscle wastage. You can feel all her ribs quite easily. It's not much muscle over the backbone. You can see the way the ribs are a bit more prominent than they ought to be from this angle. There's a definite dip between each rib. That's enough for her for now, certainly. Seems Charlotte was right to rescue the dogs. If regular feeding doesn't help them gain weight, their poor condition will need further investigation. But for now, Cassie has other worries. With her fur clipped, the extent of the bite wounds are revealed. With her having a fur on top, we could only see this one little puncture wound here, and that was because it was freshly bleeding. From the look of that, it's a long time of keep going at her all the time. A lot worse than what I actually expected. It's all on the back of her neck, really, so that's the same as what we clipped up initially, and then this side's a deeper puncture wound there, and there's a couple of little puncture marks there. So we just need to give that a really good flush and clean. Oh, nice, sweet a very good girl, you? Cassie will need to stay at the vets overnight. So while the nurses tend to her wounds, Charlotte gets ready to take Jess to kennels. For now, it's probably best the two collies spend some time apart. Good girl. I feel a little bit better about the situation after the vet's thoughts on the matter. It's made me probably realise that it is the right thing, what I've done. Um, and although I do feel really sorry for their owner, um, and I do feel sorry for the dogs as well, um, it is the right thing for them. We'll see what the future holds for both Cassie and Jess later. Rescue dogs are capable of some incredible things. We've seen them help people at a time of need, use their noses to further medical science, and fight crime. But their abilities don't end there, as Angelica Bell discovers. Dogs can make great companions, but some are more than just a best friend, playing a vital role in the everyday life of their owners. Now, today, I'm in Sheffield to meet a very special rescue dog that's doing exactly that. Wendy Martin has several conditions which affect her mobility, but for the past nine years, she's had assistance dogs to help her with daily tasks. Hi, Wendy. Hi, yes. Lovely to meet you. Her current dog is Kevin, who was given up by his previous owners when they could no longer care for him. Obviously, things aren't easy for you, Wendy, but just explain to me why you need his help. I've got disc degeneration in my neck and the bottom of my spine, which I've had for years. I suffer with stiff muscles, um, my joints hurt, bone pain. So if I'm struggling, the dog's there to help me. Yeah. So tell me a bit about Kevin. At home, he pulls doors, pushes doors. It helps me when I'm out as well. Quite often drop things, so he'll pick things up. I'd love to see Kevin do at work, some do some yes. stuff. Would that be OK? Yes, that would be fine. Would that be all right? Let's go. Yes. Come on in. There's a good boy. Good boy. This way. For the past few weeks, Kevin's been living with Wendy, but because he's not a fully qualified assistance dog yet, he's still in training. Hello. Come on in. Kevin behind. And that happens at Support Dogs, a Sheffield-based charity that has trained hundreds of dogs to help people like Wendy. Well done. Georgina Spratling has been working with Kevin. Open. Good boy. Well done. He's been trained to Good boy. load and unload the washing machine for Wendy. Yeah. Um, it's a big part of him helping her out with her daily tasks. It saves Wendy bending over, yes. pulling on Very wet, close. tough things and things like that. Good boy. Right, Kevin, empty. So are there specific words that need to be taught? We try and just tend to use one word um, cues for them because they can understand that much easier than a whole sentence. Thank you. Really nice and simple. Oh, well, well, <laughs> well done. Good boy. That's a good boy. So good. <laughs> He's showing off today. Settle. Good boy. 
he just loves it. It's just a game, mm. you know, everything's yeah, yeah. a game for them. That's the most important thing for us, that the dogs are happy, loving what they're doing, and as you can see by Kev, he does. Over 7,000 disabled people in the UK rely on assistance dogs to help with everyday tasks. Their four-legged friends give them valuable emotional support and independence. Kevin will take my coat off for me. Kevin, pull, pull. Good boy. Good boy. Kevin, pick up. Good boy, well done. How do you start the whole process off? Specifically teaching the sort of bringing things towards and picking things up. All the training we use is reward-based. It's all using treats and toys and motivation. Get the phone. Good boy. Thank you. So how did you know that Kevin was, was perfect for this role? The most important thing we're looking for is happy and confident dogs. Settling is a big one that takes some dogs a long time to learn. He's really To be good really at... calm when they're not working, just chill out. They know it's their time to switch off, so they need their downtime too. So being in a settle is a hard one for some dogs as well. Chilled Kevin has definitely got that nailed. The charity also trains dogs for people with autism and to warn those with epilepsy of oncoming seizures, providing a life-changing service. Kevin's been working on mastering a vital task for Wendy, fetching help if she finds herself in trouble. She needs help. He should come and get somebody, get their attention and bring them back so to her. So it's a really important skill, so... Yes, definitely. If he's trained to do that, she should be in safe hands. Yeah. Or should that be safe pause? Kevin, fetch help. Good. Good boy. So you've given him a treat. So he gets a treat and I ask, where is she? And he brings me back to Good Wendy. Boy. So at the moment, um, we're starting to try and change it to Wendy's daughters so that they can practice in the home. But eventually it should be that he finds the nearest person. We can go out the room now, I reckon. He's ready for that. Kevin, fetch help. Yes, good boy. Nice one. Where is she? Good boy. Where is she? Good lad, that's super. Where is she? Good boy, well done. Come here. Kevin, fetch help. Kevin even manages to find us despite the distractions of a busy office. Where is she? Good lad. Good boy. Before you had support dogs, I'll just explain how difficult things were. Well, I couldn't do much when you're out on your own you don't get noticed. When you've got a dog, there's a lot more people that come and say to you, do you need help? So That's in a way, it. beforehand, you, you, you felt invisible? Yeah, yeah. Wendy, what difference has a support dog made to your life? A great difference. I know I've got the dog, and if I can't do it, then the dog will do it. Straight away, as soon as I wake up, his tail's wagging, looks at me, must to say, what are we going to do today? Like, you know, and it's, it's good. It's been a great day for Georgina's latest protégé. Rescue dog Kevin has certainly given Wendy the freedom to live a normal life. He was given up because a previous owner couldn't care for him, but now Kevin and Wendy care for each other in a relationship that benefits them both, and it's wonderful to see. Now from bright young assistant's dog, Kevin, to an old timer in need of help. And this is a shaggy dog story with a real sting in the tail. On Merseyside, Inspector Anthony Joins is on his way to investigate the case of a dog that's proven to be too big a challenge for its owners. Sounds like a dog that's just found itself in an unfortunate situation, really. And a, you know, quite a, a senior dog in years, about 11 years old. And initially, it was the daughter's dog. I don't think she could keep it in her house, so then it went to the mum. Now, the mum finds herself in a, in a circumstance where she's going to be moving house and she can't take the dog with her. It's just really sad, really, that you find a dog of that age in that position. Senior dogs, they love routine. They like security. So obviously to be passed from pillar to post is a really stressful time for them. What they don't want is disruption really, unfortunately. And, but obviously sometimes disruption happens. This is life, isn't it? 
Hey, Joyce, you all right? All right, to come in. Hello. Hello, buddy. 11-year-old Alfie, a German Shepherd cross, has a unique look. He's a strange-looking dog, isn't he? But in a nice way, he looks like a cartoon character, doesn't he? And the mattedness of his fur. Have you been chopping at that, have you? Have you had a go? Yeah, look, I've yeah. had a go at it. Yeah. I have a go at it, though, And being matted isn't this old boy's only problem. See, I've noticed that boil on his tail. How long has that been there? It's been there for a bit, actually, yeah. to be honest. OK. Is he paying that? Boy, he'll have quite a lot of attention, is he? He does, but he goes to lie down with a knife. I can feel he's got quite bad mats on the bottom of his ears, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been do, trying to get them off. And he's got quite a lot of little lumps and bumps, hasn't he? Yeah. I didn't realise till today that he had that. They're not all necessarily something serious. That looks serious, that back one. The one on the tail. And then he's got another one next to it now. Here, yeah. Another one. Yeah. Lumps and bumps, quite common in older dogs but they should always be checked over by a vet, really, because you just never know. It, it could be something quite simple that can be treated or removed, but if you leave it, you know, it could turn into something really quite nasty. Poor Alfie. He's been living with Joyce temporarily, but now, as she's about to downsize to a new flat, he's going to have to find another home. You're in a situation now where you're moving. I've got to move, yeah, because the house is too big and... There's too many stairs. The crux of it is that you need to, you need to rehome him. You, you can't take him with you, can you? The best thing to do is sign the old fella over to the charity. Beautiful, isn't he, though? <laughs> I really like him. Yeah, he's, I really like him. He's, he's something else. Due to Joyce's health issues, Alfie hasn't been walked for some time, so he seems keen to go. All right, bud. He said, oh, good, where are we going? It's OK. Let's go and see what the vet says. You're all right, Alf. Massive, isn't he? Come on, Alf. Right. I think he's bigger than my kennel. I've put a big pillow in there for you, bud. Anthony's keen to get to the bottom of Alfie's health problems. In you go. Go on, Alf. Go on, lad. Well done. He has got numerous lumps and bumps. The one on his tail looks quite angry and aggressive, and that's why I'm taking him to the vets now. My priority is to make sure I get that looked at. Older dogs can be difficult to rehome, especially if they don't have a clean bill of health. So let's hope the growth on Alfie's tail isn't anything serious. Coming up. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Yes. Cooped up collies, Cassie and Jess, both go it alone. That reassurance that she does and looks towards me for it is exactly what we want. She's doing really well. And stay tuned for your chance to rehome a rescue dog. Side, Anthony Joins has just collected Alfie, an older dog that needs rehoming due to his owner's change in circumstances. Alfie has a large growth on his tail, which needs urgent medical attention. Whew. Alfie boy, let's get you out. Let's not. <laughs> That's a very graceful, was it? Come on. On duty is vet Katie McCormack. Hello. Hi, are you oh right? my goodness. Hello. Hello. He's a strange looking dog, isn't he? But the, the tail issue is what I've noticed that looks okay. a bit sinister to me, and we might okay. have to end up sort of doing something about it. Can I get you to stand up, Hanson? Ready? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, dear, Hanson. There's definitely some infection there, but I don't think it's just infection alone. I think there's some kind of muscle growth there that has just got infection on top. Yeah. I can feel a few other little lumps and bumps as well. He's got one here. Yeah. And there's a one there as well. The lumps might not be anything serious, but the growth on the tail is a cause for concern. Given the size of the dog, it could be a type of tumour, what's called a mast cell tumour. Yeah. Now, they're quite delicate tumours, if you like, so yeah. if you pop a needle in to get a few cells, like take a sample of it, you can actually cause a bit of a, a breakdown, which can make the dog sick and can make the, it spread more as well. So I think right. because of where it is, luckily it's in a really handy spot yeah. because it's on the tail and you can get, you, basically you can take the tail off. Yeah. Amputating Alfie's tail will hopefully get rid of anything potentially cancerous, 
And while he's under, there's a couple of other issues that need addressing. You definitely do with a bit of TLC with this coat this hat coat symbol. Quite bad, isn't it? Got quite a few mats around the tail as well. Um, that's all Matt there. There's his tail and there's his mat. Yeah. So I think we could do with a bit of a haircut. We've got a few teeth that could probably do with a bit of a clean here. They're not bad for his age at all, really. We see a lot worse. Basically, he's going to have a head-to-toe makeover. He'll be feeling a lot more comfortable, even when he just gets rid of all these mats. Think, yeah. Must be so itchy and awful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So tomorrow, we're going to amputate the tail and then send it away to find out for definite what it is. And then we're probably going to investigate the other two lumps that I found as well and then clean up his teeth and then clean up his coat as well. He's got a long day ahead of him tomorrow and we just see how, see how it goes, really. And luckily, one of the brilliant vet nurses at the surgery has, um, has, has agreed to take him home tonight as well, which, which is brilliant for me because it means that he's not, gonna, he's not just going to be put into a kennel tonight. Um, He's had quite a stressful day. Enter brilliant nurse. Come on, Lenelle. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow, buddy. Go on, Thanks, Abby. Thanks very much. Here's hoping it all goes well for affable Alfie, and he'll soon be on the road to finding a new home. Keep those fingers crossed, Anthony. In Shropshire, Border Collies Jess and Cassie have been in kennels for nearly two months after being rescued from a hazardous and dirty house. Both dogs were finding the conditions of the house, combined with no exercise, stressful. Nervous five-year-old Cassie wasn't getting on with 14-year-old Jess at all. For now, kennel supervisor Neil Richardson has decided to give them some time apart. Hello, Jess. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, sweetie. What are you doing? Go for a walk. Yeah. Good girl. Nice. Jess is the more confident of the two dogs. Yeah, they came in together, but uh, unfortunately, we have got them kennel separately because uh, Jess can have a bit of a go at Cassie and have a bit of a snap when uh, Cassie gets a little bit too much. Both Cassie and Jess were underweight when they arrived, but are now in much better condition thanks to regular meals. Hello, sweetie. Hello. Okay. Go on, Jess. Okay. Yeah. Jess, go on. Go. And retired working dog Jess is finding life a lot less stressful now she's getting out and about. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Jess. Come here. You can't just assume that if they come from the same home that they're going to get on famously together. <laughs> Jess certainly seems in good spirits without her little sister. But how is Cassie coping on her own? Happily, she's now recovered from her bite wounds. Working on her anxiety is animal care assistant Mark Tapley. Cassie's a very sweet girl, just lacks confidence on her own. Building up her confidence, you basically just make every interaction positive and calm as you can. It's interactions even as basic as just walking past when she's in the block, entering the kennel, spending time in the kennel with her. Today, she's not overly uncomfortable. It's a keen, positive interest. Cassie's growing confidence means she will now allow Mark to put her on a lead, and she's enjoying her walks. Typical collie, really. Very alert and almost got that herding sort of line about when she's walking out and about, which I don't mind. She's not spinning. She's not really stressed. The tail's up, which is good. The ears are up and alert. They're not forced straight back over the head. She's not feeling overly anxious. And that reassurance that she does and looks towards me for it is exactly what we want. She's doing really well. For now, it looks like Cassie and Jess will be better off finding separate homes. I think Jess could quite happily be rehomed as she is. Uh, Cassie maybe is just a little bit more confidence building first. With Jess, you can just go in, pop the lead on, take her out for a walk. 
Cassie is slightly different kettle of fish. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to get her confidence, even just to clip the lead on. And uh, she's not as confident out and about, about as Jess is, but Jess has got a few more years on her, so. <laughs> well, we have some great news. 14-year-old Jess is now living with a retired couple in Essex, the perfect forever home for an old girl looking for the quiet life. And Cassie's also found her perfect match in Denise Yousen's. So how is Cassie settling in? She's doing really well with people. Um, she's getting more and more used to meeting new people. And um, she settles down really quickly with them now, just like she's done with you. She's struggling a little bit with other dogs, but we're going to get some help with that. And what was it about Cassie that, that you liked? Well, it was important for me to have a dog that was friendly with people because I run um, a dog-friendly cafe. And um, it was important for me to find a dog that likes exercise, as uh, I live in a beautiful bit of the world and I walk quite a lot as it is, So, um, and I enjoy running. So um, a dog that was energetic was the, was the perfect kind of dog. And she has such an amazing face and an amazing personality that I just thought she was irresistible. So you spend a lot of time together? We do. We walk miles every day through beautiful countryside and um, apparently she used to be a working sheepdog. So um, I think she's fascinated because we walk through fields of sheep and surrounded by farms and um, I think she sort of feels at home. She's obviously quite an intelligent um, dog, so I think we're going to have a lot of fun learning new things. Um, she likes to play and I don't think she's had a lot of chance to play in her past life. So it's good to see her having fun. And it's, it's really nice when you can see her sort of lying down, knowing that she's no longer alert, that she feels she can relax. So it's a pleasure to see her sort of relax in your, in your company. So Cassie's been a good addition to the household. She has indeed. It feels like I've got a new best friend. Oh. oh. She's all relaxed. I think she agrees. Back on Merseyside, it's makeover day for Shaggy Dog Alfie. Come on, Alfie. Hi. Right, let's take you through to the other room. Vet Becky McAlpine will be performing procedures on his teeth, coat mm -hmm. and the nasty-looking mass on his tail. Hopefully, at the end, he'll look yeah. ten years younger. You ready, Alfie? You gonna be brave boy? To do that, they'll need to put this friendly fella under. Good boy. Well done. All finished. Well done. So we'll just wait for him to go to sleep for a few minutes now. Lie down if you want. Good boy. Lie down. Good boy. First, Becky needs to x-ray his chest. We don't know what the lump on his tail is, so to be on the safe side, we're going to check in case it is something cancerous that might have spread to the chest. We're going to make sure that there's no signs of any tumour there. And if there isn't, then we can carry on. Let's do it. Hopefully it's good news. I had a look through all the x-rays, just to be sure, and I'm quite happy that there's no signs of tumour in the chest, which is really, really good for Alfie. What a relief. Now Becky can check out his gnashes. I think only this tooth is going to have to come out. The rest look pretty good. This one's very discoloured and quite wobbly, so it's probably causing him a bit of pain. Right, I'm looking away. That reminds me I must do some flossing. There we go. Quite a big root on that tooth. Now we'll just clean up the rest of them. Give him a nice sparkly smile. Yeah, that is like nails on a blackboard. Stage two in Alfie's makeover is to sort his matted fur. Okay. He's covered, he's got big mats behind his ears, on his feet, on his sides, around his bottom and his tail. So they'll be really uncomfortable. That's one mat just from his ear. It's a big job with a dog this shaggy, so it's all hands on deck. Just found a scab on his ear. It's probably from where he's been itching because he's got this massive mat behind his ear. They're very uncomfortable. So he's managed to injure himself a little bit there, but we'll give that a good clean up, get these mats off. You can see just how big the lump is now that all the hair's come off. He's got a second lump underneath here. Just there. Then we'll have to go a bit higher to amputate it, but it must be so sore, bless him. 
all these mats smell because it's all dirty and there's poo stuck in them around his back end. So he's quite stinky, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll be able to get him feeling much better. After two relatively minor procedures for Alfie, it's time to amputate his tail. This is the serious bit. Are you ready? One, two, three. So it's off to the operating theatre. He's actually got another one, two, three lumps on his tail. This is the worst one. This one, when you squeeze it, it's discharged. It's infected and very nasty. So we want to take the tail off away from there to avoid risks of infection. I think the tail must have been so uncomfortable, I don't think he's going to miss it too much. The tail is wrapped to keep it sterile, and Becky's ready to make her first incision. We happy at your end? Yeah. If you don't like blood, avert your eyes. A dog's tail is an extension of its spine, so it contains small vertebrae. It's used to communicate, although a wagging tail doesn't always mean a dog is happy. They don't really rely on it too much for balancing things like cats do, although cats also cope very well without their tails. Um, and they just seem to adapt. They just sort of wiggle their little stumps that they're left with, but it doesn't seem to affect their quality of life in any way. Now what we're going to do is just cauterise the blood vessels because they're so tiny, they're too difficult to sort of tie off. Cauterising a wound involves using a heated instrument to seal Here, the blood vessels. Right Then Becky closes the wound with dissolvable stitches. OK, all finished. Okay. Thank you. Right. So you can see now, just got a little stump. And hopefully with a bit of TLC, a very happy dog again. It seems Becky's developed a soft spot for Alfie. Oh, bless him. She's agreed to foster him for a couple of weeks. Alfie's lumps will be sent to the lab to check for anything cancerous. Now the old boy needs time to recover. Get well soon, Alfie. We'll catch up with you and Becky shortly. And if you think you've got what it takes to give a pooch a good home, find out how you can become a dog rescuer. After an op to remove his tail, German Shepherd Cross Alfie was fostered by vet Becky McAlpine, who performed the procedure, and husband Dan. And what was supposed to be a short stay has become much longer. Alfie, you charmer. I've had Alfie for about two or three months now, and he's, he's settling in really, really well, although we've had him much longer than the two weeks we were told we were going to have him for. <laughs> two weeks turned into two months very rapidly. Uh, but we've decided to keep Alfie long term now because he's settled in so well into the family. And he's one of ours now, isn't he? So we couldn't send him anywhere else. That's fantastic news for lucky Alfie. Well, who could resist this lovely big softie? As well as a forever home, 11 year old Alfie has gained a little brother, 18 month old Boris. We've had Boris for a year and a half since he was a puppy. We got him when he was seven weeks old. Um, he's another one of Anthony's rescues that <laughs> ended up staying a long time. They get on really well. They're now little partners in crime, run around causing absolute havoc together. Defying his age, Alfie's taken to the fresh air and long walks like a big puppy. When we first met Alfie, we thought he might not have that long left. Now that he's sort of fully recovered from his ops and he's built up all his muscle in his legs and he's running and walking fine, I think we might have years, actually. But he's come such a long way, you wouldn't recognise him now. Since we've had him, he's put on 10 kilos, and we don't think that's in fact. We think it's just in lean muscle mass. He's now able to get up the stairs without a problem, get onto the sofa without a problem. <laughs> yeah. He can be quite cheeky. He ate a tray of canapes at a Christmas party, didn't he? He did. I love volivons. He's a great dog to have around, and, and we're really glad that we decided to keep him, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Seems his previous owner did the right thing giving him up, and Alfie owes some of his fresh start to his rescuer, Anthony Jones. <laughs> You can't resist coming to see how the big fella and Boris are doing. Hello, buddy. Oh, hello. 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 Hi, guys. Hi. How you doing? Hello. You all right? Nice hello. to see you. How good is it to see him bounding around the beach? Hello. He looks amazing. He looks absolutely he? amazing. You wouldn't think he was 11, would you? 
Good. Doing great. The tail looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. Sort of all his little fluffs growing back over his little stump. Just all the other sort of lumps and bumps and things, are they've, they even quite easily manageable for now? Yeah, is they've it just... all come back as cysts and they've all been OK. They're not bothering him, so I'm just going to leave them be. I always get asked in, in work what's the best part of the job, but this, for me, there's, no, there's nothing better than this to see two dogs now with loving owners and running around yeah. on the beach is just amazing. That's it's fabulous, amazing. isn't it? He is really, really energetic, isn't he? Yeah. And his coat looks amazing as well. Yeah. How good do you look? Hey, buddy. Hey, how good do you look? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks for taking, uh, thanks for thanks for taking him on. I know, I'll leave you alone now, I <laughs> But I'm, honestly, I'm absolutely overjoyed how, how, how well you've done with him, because yeah, I just think he's come on so me. well. It's made my day, it really has. This old fella really deserves his happy ending. You take see care, you see you later. See you soon. See you soon, all right. All right. See you guys. Bye. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Good boy. This is Billy. He's a seven-year-old um, Australian Kelpie who has been looking for a home with us now for about nine months. Unfortunately, Billy has a degenerative eye condition, which means that he has little to no sight at all. Due to this, he found kennel life really stressful, so he's gone into a nice foster home where he could be a bit more relaxed. Billy, up see. Yes, good boy. Because of his blindness, he has been overlooked, and that is a real shame because he's got so much potential and he's such an active dog, he doesn't <laughs> let it stop him from doing anything. Good boy. Billy has managed to master loads of commands, so he is really clever and um, he really uses his brain. What he lacks in sight, he sort of makes up for by having to be intuitive and work his way around the world without his eyesight. Poor? <laughs> Good boy. Billy's looking for a home in a sort of semi-rural location with secondary school aged children or above, and preferably without another dog at the moment. If Billy finally found his forever home, we would just be all so happy for him that he's finally got the home that he really deserves and that he's waited so patiently for. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Two skinny, staffy crosses need Inspector Hershey Bowles' help. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Why would you just ignore that? Can this terrified terrier be tamed? Scary person. Well, animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead is giving it her best shot. Just doing a little bit of swearing to see if I, if I would move away. Is Brandy here? Yes. Hello. And I'm going behind the scenes at Putney Animal Hospital. You get the big bars off and then we can gently take the other pins that are going into the bone. 